Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back with a diagnostic video this time. Do you have like a lack of performance in your vehicle? Does it, does it not seem to have the power that it should have? Well, there's the possibility you have a restricted exhaust. Either you've got a clogged catalytic converter or, or perhaps the mufflers come apart internally and, and has clogged everything up in there. Or on some double wall pipes, maybe the inner pipe has collapsed, causing a restriction that way. So a really quick and easy test to see if you have an exhaust restriction that's causing this performance issue is by using a vacuum gauge. Yes, this guy right here is probably one of the most useful diagnostic tools that there ever was. Before scan tools, there was this guy. And this guy right here can tell you if you have an exhaust restriction. Let's go over to the engine and I'll show you how. Here we have our lovely 2.2 liter Subaru engine, boxer engine to be precise. Uh, but it still works the same as any other engine. Uh, so what we want to do with our vacuum gauge is we need to hook it up to an intake vacuum source. And an intake vacuum source is a vacuum source that is after the throttle plate, after the throttle body. And I see one right up top that's really easy to get to. And that's this guy right here. I know that this is intake vacuum. In fact, if you want to test it, you can start the engine. If it sucks on your finger at idle, it's intake vacuum. So I'm going to take my vacuum gauge and I'm going to hook it up to that port right there. And I'm going to start the engine and we're going to look at the gauge to get a baseline of what it looks like when you don't have an exhaust restriction. Okay, as you can see we have a reading of about uh, 22 inches at idle. Intake vacuum is going to be at its peak at idle. And as you get closer to wide open throttle, it is going to drop off to zero. So at wide open throttle you have no intake vacuum. However, at aisle, you have your highest intake vacuum. And honestly, looking at this, having on just a straight up engine, just sitting there, 22 inches at idle is actually a very nice running engine. Uh, the lower the vacuum, the less your engine is, is able to pull air through it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna raise the RPMs to about 2,000 RPM. And this is still gonna give us a good bit of intake vacuum, but we're gonna need that for our test later. So we're gonna establish the baseline now. So I'm going to take it up to 2,000 RPM. Now as you can see, normally baseline, no exhaust restriction, nothing. We can pull about 23 inches of vacuum right at about 2,000 RPM. So that's a nice healthy engine. The needle stayed steady, it didn't bounce around too much. That means our engine's doing good. Now let's create an exhaust restriction. Okay, so here's my idea for creating an exhaust restriction. I'm just gonna take a rag, stuff it most of the way down into the tailpipe. If I just did this, it uh, would come flying out, so I need to secure it. I don't have a banana handy, or else I'd use a banana. Those of you familiar with the movie will know exactly where I'm going with that. That would be Beverly Hills Cop. Exhaust restriction. All right, let's start it up and observe our gauge under the same conditions, but this time with the restriction in the exhaust. We've already started out with a little bit lower vacuum. And what I expect to see is, as I, as I hold the engine RPM, I, accept, I expect to see the vacuum start to drop off further and further and further. I think I proved my point. The engine's starting to get hot, the fans are kicking on. This engine's not happy. That actually proved my point perfectly. If it's not a rag and it's something else like a clogged catalytic converter or a bad muffler or something like that, then this, this will prove it out. So this exact same test, and that's what you'll see. 
So you'll start the engine up, you'll hook the, the vacuum gauge up to an intake vacuum source, and as you hold it at about 2,000 RPM, you'll see the vacuum just slowly drop off. If you don't have a restriction, the needle will stay steady wherever it's gonna stay. And that's the thing, you also wanna see a steady needle. You don't wanna see it bouncing around too much. But if you've got performance issues, uh, and you suspect that there's a restricted exhaust, there's an easy way to do it. Now, you can confirm this even further by like say taking out your O2 sensor. If you remove the O2 sensor and take it for a drive and the performance problem is gone, then you can pretty much be rest assured that an exhaust restriction is what's causing your problem. I hope this information was helpful to you. I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me over at ericthecarguy.com where you can ask your automotive questions to our lovely search function using our database, which comes through thousands of questions and answers, and one of those just might pertain to your problem, so I suggest you try that first. Uh, if that doesn't help you, then I suggest you sign up for our forum, which is completely and totally free, and we would be more than happy to try and assist you there. Otherwise, you can find me at Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. And I close with, be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. I will see you next time.